Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines, better known as the One Handed Mechanic. If I can do it, you can too. Today we are working on a Arians 12 and a half horsepower Deluxe 24, and today we are going to replace the carburetor. The first thing we want to do is check out the tools that we need today, and we'll be right back. Okay, so tools we need today, from left to right, we got a, I use the quarter inch electric ratchet all the time. Uh, you can use a quarter inch ratchet. You can use a 3H ratchet, whatever works. You do need a 10 millimeter socket. This is a turkey baster that I have made into my personal um, fuel evacuation system. It actually works pretty nice. Uh, the fastener tool removal, uh, this actually fastener removal tool, this is nice to get your fuel lines off. It takes uh, other stuff off too. In my other videos, I use it a lot. Fuel line clamp tool, you can buy this at Home Depot, or not Home Depot, but Harbor Freight. This is where I got this from. They come in a packet of three. I'm not affiliated with Harbor Freight at all. The needle nose pliers, regular set of pliers, uh, a couple glass containers, but just showing you the fuel, what we're doing there, and of course your carburetor, and if you need a uh, flashlight. All right, so let's get to it. Okay, so everybody asks me what the part number is for these carburetors, and I have to say that every engine is different, and this is a 12 and a half horsepower engine. This is a China motor. It's not a Briggs or a Tecumseh. Uh, I don't know exactly. I think it's, a, the, it's an AX brand but it's, it's an Arians. You're gonna to go to Arians website to look up the parts. So what you have to do is you have to come down to your tag, which is right here that shows the model number and the serial number. Go to the Arians website for parts lookup, and then you're gonna go ahead and for your machine, but this is, an, this is an Arians Lux 24. You're gonna take these model numbers and serial number and you're gonna put it in there and it's gonna bring up your machine. They're all a little bit different. Maybe one carburetor will go on many different machines, but you just have to make sure you get the right carburetor for your machine. This is the one I looked up. After I got the Arians part number, I just went ahead and Googled this part, part and uh, you can find aftermarket. They're pretty much made by the same people. Just uh, make sure you read the reviews before you purchase one. All right, so let's get started. So what we wanna do is we wanna get under here because this is where the carburetor is at. And normally all these bolts that we're going to be taking off here are 10 millimeter sockets. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off these knobs. Sometimes these knobs come off easy and sometimes they don't, but I'm going to use my clip fastener tool, push up and just remember which way they go. Just remember how you have them set before you put them back together again. You want to make the only go on one way, I'm pretty sure, but just in case um, we have an arrow on top of this and it's facing the muffler. So we're just going to let that one make sure we put it back where it came from. The other one down here, I think it's the same way, comes up off of here. All right, that was pretty easy coming off, so that's just sitting on top of there. And I'm going to go ahead and take the ignition key out so we don't break it. And I'm just going to start here. I'm going to take this muffler guard off because it's actually covering this cover here. And I'm loosening them up instead of all the way out just so they don't fall. Some of them are a little bit tighter than others. See how it's stuck behind the muffler guard right here? So I'm going to go ahead and take that muffler guard. There's two on the side. Whoops. Don't lose your bolts. There's a lot of them. All right, this comes right off. And I'm just gonna lift this over the choke plate right there. Now there is a couple things in here. We have a wire right here that is for your shutoff. Okay, and that's actually bolted right here. And I would just, sometimes you can just manipulate the whole, okay. It might be just as easy just to take this off here. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off. Just remember that's a ground and you have to make sure you put that back. So that allows us to drop this off to the side. Okay, we have a, this is the primer line for the primer bulb. Make sure you check these for dry rot. Make sure they're pretty, uh, well, unless it's real cold outside, they should be pretty flexible. You got these little clips here. You just can pull them down with your fingers. And again, my fastener, clip fastener tool, kind of pry down on this. 
Now also, um, you want to make sure, I should have said this in the beginning, you want to make sure either you drain the tank, this, ha this has a fuel shut off on it over here, which is actually really nice to have. I made sure it was, made sure it was off, and I'm pretty sure I emptied the tank out, which I did. Just want to make sure that all the old gas is gone, and there is no way of shutting it off other than this fuel valve. A lot of these machines don't have the fuel shut off, which is really nice to have. And a lot of people ask me, can you put one in? And you really, the ones that don't have it, there's, it's hard to put them in here and then put the covers back on. And so we, there's a, it's just a hard way of doing it. Now, we could take this off by taking off this other one, which I'm probably gonna do. This is a heat shield. Pull this up out of the way. I'm just gonna leave it on its clip. Okay, now you have to unbolt these. Now, before I unbolt these, I'm actually gonna take the fuel line off. And you may wanna pinch this off just to make sure that no fuel is gonna come out. If your fuel shutoff does not work, the fuel will just come out unless you empty your gas tank in the beginning. Okay, so I'm gonna use fuel line shutoff. And I'm just gonna pinch it. And this is just for extra protection, just to make sure that nothing comes out of there. And then we're gonna go ahead and move the clip off the fuel line. Go ahead and use your this is very nice to push the fuel line off without hurting the fuel line all right so we did have a little bit of fuel in there and you want to drain this before you before you um put the new well when you put the carburetor on make sure you drain your whole line and your tank of any old gas you do not want to put old gas inside the new carburetor at this point we can go ahead and take the bolts off two bolts off of here are actually like nuts that they double use them pretty much cover comes off here this is a little stuck Okay, so we have here the carburetor and everything's off now we have to be careful you have a spring right here and you have to make sure that you take this spring off very gently just so you don't bend it and then the throttle linkage right here you're just gonna push your little piece of plastic it's going to move one direction and it's going to unclip itself it's going to be hard to show this on camera but it'll slide off to the side like that and then it'll pop right up like so now that that tension there's a lot of tension on there so be careful when you put it back on now this is going to be tight the carburetor most likely will be tight due to due to the gasket so sometimes just by tapping on it a couple times It'll break it away from the gasket, which is just like that. Okay, so here's our old carburetor that we're, get, we're taking out and putting a new one on. Now here's the gasket. This gasket, if they come off easily and you have gaskets with your kit, ours did come with a gasket or two. I just want to try to get these off. You want to use them if you can. If you need to in a pinch, you can use the old ones if they're not ripped. But let me go ahead and get the new one. Now I have the new one and the old one. I don't trust aftermarket parts. So I'm gonna line up the old one and the new one together and it looks like they're identical. So that's a good sign. So we're gonna go ahead and put the new one on. And actually this new gasket is a nice one, I like it. Some of them are pretty cheap. Okay, the new carburetor right here. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure you put it on the right right way. You really can't put it on the wrong way because the inlet right here for the fuel is right there. Go ahead and put that on. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of time and get a glass container and I'm gonna go ahead and just flush that fuel out of there. I'm gonna turn the fuel on. I pretty much drained it, but there is still some coming. So we'll be able to see if there's anything 
floating around the bottom of this tank. Okay, I'm gonna drain this and we'll be right back. Well, come closer. Okay, so this is what I got out of the tank. All right, and I like to use glass containers so I can see on the bottom. I'm gonna let this sit on the bench for a while and I'm gonna take a look at how much dirt was on the bottom. But I also wanna show you that this is the old gas and it's yellowish, not a great color in my eyes. I like to see them a little bit cleaner. And then I put, new, I put fresh gas in there and I use the, uh, the highest octane at the gas pump because it, you know, I, I just believe in the, the gas is better gas. You know, I'm using this, but it has a fuel shutoff valve, so I'm turning the valve on. I want to bring some of this down and out so it flushes the fuel line. If your fuel line is deteriorated and cracked, you would let, you you'd probably want to replace it, and that would you'd have to take off the gas tank on this one. This one is in good shape. I'm going to go ahead and shut the fuel off right now. Put this back on just for make it a little quicker for us to get this job done. Now I want to show you. This is the fresh stuff. Big difference. It's a lot cleaner looking. It's a lot clearer looking. And we just flushed it out. So when we attach that fuel line to the tank or to the carburetor, it'll be good to go. Now, also, you're wondering what this is. This is a turkey baster that I've used for many, many years. And I put a little piece of fuel line on it. So what we can do, what, what you can do is you can suck out all, you have to take out, they have a filter here, this filter, which is nice to have. You have to take the filter out and then you can go ahead and suck all your old gas out, get it down to the bottom where you don't have anything left. And then you can go ahead and drain the rest of it out here. Put your fresh gas in, drain some through so you have fresh gas going to your brand new carburetor and you should be good to go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put the fuel line on the carburetor now. Put your clamp back on. All right, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna go pick up the throttle. Now, like I said, this is spring loaded, so we have to move this back. Oh, and it looks like our old carburetor, or our new carburetor is different than the old carburetor, a little bit. All right, so the old carburetor had this clip. The new carburetor has a slot in it. So that slot is gonna allow us to put the the governor arm linkage in. Now, I'm gonna have to pull this out a little bit to get it straight. So I'm pulling the carburetor out a little bit so I can get that to go in, just like that. And you see how it's it's locked in now? And then we have to get the spring in this little hole here. And this is gonna be a little tricky, but just try not to bend them. If they bend, you can bend them back up, but you just try to be as careful as you can, just like that. Okay, and there you have it. Now I'm gonna push this back on and that will all stay together and as it should be. All right, now there is one more gasket that goes here, which I don't think we need. That gasket would have went on the back side of this. This was went like this, over here like this. And since we don't have an air cleaner, we don't need that gasket. And this is the other part here. I think it went. And figure out how it goes. Okay, so I think it went like this. Yeah. Yeah, and you can tell that there's a little hole here and there's a little slice taken out right there. So that'll line up just like so, like that. And this is the one that was a little tight getting off. All right, so that slides on like that. Now this new carb came with a brand new, uh, brand new primer line. So either I'm going to use it, or if the other one's just as good, I'm going to probably use the old one. Okay, so we have your nuts to hold us all together here. Again, this is a 10 millimeter. Now I'm going to take my fuel line clamp off here. We don't need it any longer. Go ahead and tighten this up. Make sure they're nice and snug. Don't go too crazy with it. This is only a quarter inch electric ratchet so it doesn't put a whole lot of torque on everything. Okay. Now at this point, this is where you want to put a new spark plug in. Your spark plug goes here. If you're gonna do the job 
and you're gonna do the carburetor, you're already in here, go ahead and put a spark plug in. This one is a brand new one. And at this point, we're gonna flip this up and over. All right, so my clip came out. It's just a, it just holds a spark plug wire in one spot. That goes there. Make sure you put your ground back on, which is here. All right, so this is the the old primer line. We're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and put the new primer line from the carburetor that came with the carb back on here. And just so you know, when you do prime the carburetor, if you if you prime it too much, it will actually you'll actually see fuel coming out the front of the carburetor. So that's a normal thing if you push this primer bulb too much. Okay, so that's gonna go on like that. It looks like, and you can tell by the wear marks that right here, you can see that it's clean. So this lip went underneath the fuel tank like that. And then you can tell by the wear marks over here where our bolts were laying against this. So you notice this goes behind here. I'm going to start by putting in two on the carburetor side here. And don't tighten anything up until you get them all in. So you don't have a mislined. It'll help you line everything up. And sometimes lining these up can be a little tricky. If you can, start them all by hand. have the muffler guard here. Now normally at this point I probably want to try to get it to run just to make sure it's running okay. Before you really get it all buttoned up but I'm just going to go ahead and So we have two left on this side, and like I said, don't tighten everything up until you get them in there. Just wanna make sure we get those last two in. And it's a little bit easier to flex this guard around so it wasn't hard for me to line these up. Okay, then we have to find out how this guy went in. And this is your throttle. You got slow and fast, okay? And you can see there's a little lineup right here for the rabbit, and then down here is turtle. This is like a mini throttle. It's actually not, not a bad thing, but you're always gonna run them at full speed, so there's really no, and then the arrow on this choke knob, remember, now this is facing a different way, so it's actually showing it on start. I'm gonna go ahead and put it down should try both ways here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the arrow facing that way. All right, so that's run and that's start. So it was facing start when I put the carburetor on, but we're gonna leave it on start because that's how you want it. I'm gonna actually leave it on, um, actually I'm gonna do like medium throttle since we have a throttle, I'm gonna leave it at choke. I'm gonna turn a fuel valve on and give this a couple moments to uh, have the fuel run down. Don't forget to put your ignition key back in and then turn it to the right, which is the on position. And then it's about 65, 70 degrees right now. It might be a little bit warmer than that, so we probably don't need a whole lot of choke. 
But I'm gonna go ahead and prime this a few times. One, two, three. Make sure you check your oil before you start your machine, which I did. I'm gonna give this a shot. So that guy uh, starts up and runs fairly well. Let me just do, do the startup one more time. I'm just gonna use the choke this time. I turned it off by ignition just to show you that the ignition is working. The key ignition, you have to make sure that's in or it will not start. That pretty much sums it up for how to install a carburetor on a Arians 12 and a half horsepower deluxe 24 snowblower. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks to you all for watching my channel. Please tell your friends, and I will catch you on the next one.